Okay, let's see here. This should work now. So, you've come to hear me tell a story, have you? If you please, we would love to hear one of your stories. You have seen so much. You have lived so long. Oh, <laughs> so good of you to remind me of my age, child. No, don't worry. I am an old woman, but I've lived a long and fulfilling life, and I do have stories to tell. Which story would you like to hear? A true one. A true story. All my stories are true, child. There are enough fairy tales in the worlds already. There's no need for me to make up more, believe me. Tell us the story of the balance, then. <laughs> you want the story of the balance? Oh, that's a long story, child. And not one I'd venture to tell at this hour. But perhaps I could tell you a story that I heard a long time ago. A story that became a crucial turning point in the history of the balance. And that set in motion wheels that, to this day, are still turning. Please, yes, that does sound like a story we'd like to hear. Very well. This story, like all good stories, begins where it ends. In a tower. In a realm that is no more. Hey, Comptar. Good to see you, Charles. Sorry, the, the, the this is using an HD texture pack to get this to run um, and, and so it'll work with uh, OBS and, and so it's going to look a little funky. Yeah, excuse me. So I do not remember how to solve any of the puzzles in this game, so this will be interesting to... It's the first time I'm playing this in... Gosh, almost 20 years. I have not revisited this game in a long time. Mostly because it's always been hard to get it to run. Even back when it first came out, you had to...
There were a whole bunch of patches you had to get for it. Dreamfall always made me kind of upset. And the way things go in, in Dreamfall chapters. But this one is, is fun all the way through. Once, just once, it would be nice to have a decent night's sleep without waking up screaming from a bad dream at 4 a.m. Postcard pretty. Real life never looked this good. Let's see if I can remember what to do here. Real life never looked this good. I guess if I don't do something to save that egg, I'll suffer seven years of bad karma or something. Did that sound come from the egg? Boy, that's some chick! I don't think I can get a good grip on it. It's too big and slippery and I might drop it by accident. such pleasure in torturing us. Torturing you? Who are you? It's the tree. We are the voice of all trees, the spirit of wood and leaf. You're a talking tree? No, a tree does not talk. At least not in your tongue. The tongue of trees is the language of wood, root, and leaf. Who are you then? Like we said, we are the voice of all trees. Whenever an injustice is done, we must speak for the tree, if we are present. It's the branch. I shouldn't have broken the branch off. Oh, what does it matter anyway? There is nothing more to be done for us. We are simply here to provide comfort in the final passing to Earth. We? I only see one of you. We are one with our host, as we are all one spirit, but legion. Yeah, uh, thanks for clearing that up. We do not expect you to understand. You are human. What's the deal with the egg? Egg? What egg? Oh, of course, the child. 
Whenever the mother was absent, we were entrusted with the safety of the child. But now, withered and without strength, we can do nothing to help. We have failed the mother, and we despair. Our shame knows no bounds. I think that's a root from the tree there, so we can just ask the tree to pick up the egg. What happened to the tree? Oh, the pain. As the battle raged, we... Battle? Between the mother and black chaos. She was only protecting her child, but it would not back down. And the force of their battle shook the mountain. The brook that fed us was led astray, and without water, we began to wither and die. Who are you again? We are the Wood Spirit. We come to all trees in the hour of great need to provide comfort and aid in the passing to Earth, and to give a voice to those who suffer. Our time is running out as we speak. The passing to Earth is about to begin. Leave us now. What about the egg? Oh, it is too late. Without sustenance, we do not have the strength to bring it safely home. We have failed. And the Earth will know our shame for all time to come. Isn't there anything I can do to help? Oh, we do not expect a human to come to our aid. Lose the attitude, okay? Just tell me if there's anything I can do. It is futile. We need water, but there is none. Not after the brook changed course. I'll find a way. Don't panic. We do not panic. Unlike you, we accept our destiny. If, however, against all odds, you do succeed, we will carry the child safely back into its nest. Do not make a foolish attempt on your own. It would spell certain misery. According to the, um, spirit, there was some kind of battle that split the rock and changed the course of the stream. According to the, um, according to the, um, spirit, there was some kind of battle that split the rock and changed the course of the stream. I'm not entirely certain what grand purpose this is supposed to serve, but it sure looks like I know what I'm doing. I'm not entirely I'm an artist, not a botanist, but I'm pretty certain this tree is dead, or close to it. According to the, um, spirit. Let's see here, what other item do I need? This is interesting. I've never seen a scale this size before. Okay, I got the dragon scale. I'll keep it as a souvenir. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, use that. Oh, over here. Come on, April. This should do the trick. Having trouble getting the interface to work, right? There we go. Well, that was fast. Hello? 
blow. Leave us be. Are you okay? We find our strength returned, and so we have no time for idle conversation. We must drink and rejoice. Aren't we forgetting something? Hush, listen. The song of ancient wood. Is it not sweet? Sweet, definitely. Yeah, the baby's probably ready to boogie down as well. The baby. Oh, the egg. Thank the earth. We almost forgot. Uh-oh. Yeah, ungrateful. But I mean, it's a tree. Humans are usually pretty ungrateful to trees. What? What was that? It's a Dargan. Uh -oh. Big Mama Dargan. It is you. You have come. You know me? April. Daughter. I have been waiting for you. Waiting? Why? Because it begins here, with you, as it always has. What do you mean? The breach and the mending, the pain and the joy, the end of the old and the dawn of the new. A different world. I am the mother of what is, but you, you are the mother of a future that may yet be. How will I know? How will I know what to do? I will guide you, and I will protect you as much as I can. But in the end, you are on your own. I'm afraid. You always were, my child, my daughter. This is probably not a good thing. That's a bad Darken, I think. And there's the chaos. basically been simmering in my own sweat every night this past week. It doesn't look like it's gonna cool down anytime soon, either. It's another sunny day in Newport. You resent that? What do you resent? Well, it's a good thing the studio's got proper air conditioning. I promised myself I was gonna spend most of the day working, and I don't intend to break that promise. Not this time. My cash card at the moment is really quite useless. There can't be more than a dollar or two left in it. I'm not good at taking care of living things, but this plant's doing just fine despite months of neglect. Where is there something that you actually need down here? It's a rubber ducky. Helplessly trapped under that rusty old grill. I think I need the rubber ducky for some reason. Spiky. It's a rusty old grill, kept afloat by a rubber ducky. 
It's a clothesline. You love trees. Oh, okay. It's Constable Guybrush, my toy mo- Oh, ape. He doesn't much like being called monkey. <laughs> that, of course, is a reference to uh, the Discworld adventure games and to uh, <laughs> Monkey Island. I think one of his eyes is falling out. Constable Guybrush is a strange hybrid between man, ape, and musician. In addition to being an officer of the law, of course. Yep. <laughs> Comptor, yep, it's Constable Guybrush. So yeah, that's a reference to Guybrush Threepwood from Monkey Island, in addition to a reference to the librarian from uh, Discworld. Constable Guybrush. Sorry, Guybrush, but I need to borrow your eye for a while. I can't remember why we need the eye. <laughs> it's Constable Guybrush. It's Constable Guybrush. I could only carry one suitcase with me when I left home. There was so much I would have loved to bring, but c'est la vie. At least it was a clean break with my past. I guess when all my hard work starts paying off, I'll get a house and fill it with all kinds of new junk. The past. Who needs it? Alright, so my wardrobe's sort of chic deficient, but I can't afford to be cutting edge. Useful, practical, and cheap is my shopping mantra. It's a bunch of drawings I drew when I was a kid. I don't even know why I brought them here. They mean absolutely nothing to me. Bunch of useless old drawings. When fame and wealth come knocking, I'll buy a wardrobe the size of an ocean liner and fill it with clothes for a million bucks. Right now, I'll try to focus on my work. When fame and when fame and wealth come knocking, I'll buy a wardrobe the size of an ocean liner and fill it with clothes for a million bucks. Right now, I'll try to focus on my work. just a chair. That's my desk, so, theoretically, that's where I'm supposed to do my work. I think my muse has departed me for greener pastures, though, because lately, inspiration's been fleeting at best. Shelves. I worry about the exhibition coming up in two weeks. This is the net result of my work. A pile of nothing. And it's not even a big pile of nothing. I feel ya. Reminds me of trying to write my thesis. Still just shelves. I had to borrow some posters from the cafe because I just can't afford to buy any of my own. When I think about it, that's so depressing. That's my work. It's supposed to be a portrait of my life study teacher, but I think he might disagree. It's a picture of me and my friends. It's a picture of Charlie, Emma, and me, in Florence Park. Marcus took it about a month ago, before it got real hot. My on-again, off-again diary. We've had a turbulent relationship, her and I. Dear diary, note to self. Dreams of talking trees and dragons aside, it's still no excuse for talking to inanimate matter in the real world. So quit it!
Not sure why I need the diary, but might as well take it. I'm part of the should be reading more, but life's too short generation. We embrace our illiteracy. The last book I read was How to Seduce the Man of Your Dreams. Now, if I can just find a man to dream about, I'll be all set. Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, the mood on that one for the journal, yeah. No, I absolutely, every time I try to keep a journal, I, I just put it down and never come back to it. <laughs> Let's see if this will let me save properly. All right, there we go. April Ryan, you have got to get past yourself. <laughs> it's kind of fun. All the characters in this game are very Gen X-y. You know, <laughs> like the whole, every line that April says... I'd better head over to the studio to do some work. Only two weeks until the big show opens, and my contribution is in serious need of attention. Might be a good idea to get dressed first, though. You can tell, like, a millennial did not write this, <laughs> you know? Hey, babe. Babe, you're looking real sexy today. Zach, listen, I I've got to run, and... What's going on, April? How you been? I don't really have time to hang around. Then how about hanging out with me tonight? A few raptures, some hot dancing. Uh, did I tell you I got a VIP pass to the pavilion? Those things are hard to come by, babe. No, that's not gonna work, Zach. What? You got something against me, babe? Do I offend you in some way? Oh, no. I just don't think it's a good idea for us to be... together like that. Hey, whatever. You come crawling back when you realize your mistake, babe. I'm out of here. Yeah, you're not supposed to like this guy. <laughs> I wish I could say things have gotten better. What but... an asshole. Computer. Voice interface is not installed. Please use the touchscreen interface to communicate with this free access terminal. Oh, okay. Why not consider a very reasonable upgrade? In addition to a voice interface, true holo display technology and Instacredit compatibility. No, I'll just use my hands, thanks. You are missing out on a great opportunity. If you upgrade now... Hold on! You understood that. You have a voice interface installed already. Why would I pay to have another one installed? Current voice interface is for sales purposes only. <laughs> if you take advantage of this very affordable upgrade today... No, really. You... This terminal doesn't belong to me. Noted. Please refrain from voice communication in the future or you will be reported to the fact FUB and charged for processing time. FUB? Fair Use Bureau. They are authorized to carry deadly arms. Well, whatever. Sorry. Well, that hasn't changed. <laughs> that was downright predictive. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right, Kalen? <laughs> Here's that the house mom. She's she runs the this dorm. She and her wife. I think that's that's who this character is, if I recall correctly. Morning, Fiona. Good morning, darling. You're up early. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Are you feeling all right? You look a little pale. Yeah, yeah, I mean, how often have you had, like, Microsoft, a Microsoft product be like, yeah, you gotta pay us for something that's already installed on your computer. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, you bought this last year, but uh, we, you need to 
renew your subscription to it. Um, I paid for the software. Don't I own it? No, no, you absolutely do not. <laughs> I had a bad nightmare. Again? Well, you're not the only one, darling. Mickey woke me up screaming in the middle of the night. She wouldn't go back to sleep until I made her a cup of herbal tea. Nightmares? Apparently. But she refuses to tell me what they were. I think she's embarrassed. That doesn't sound like Mickey. I know, darling. Don't tell her I said so. I've never seen her so agitated in my life. She scared the hell out of me. I don't know why I have nightmares. I guess they could be stress-related. After all, the exhibition's right around the corner. Oh yes, the school exhibition. How's that going? God, don't ask. I have no idea how I'm going to finish my painting on time. I haven't felt inspired in ages. I think you work too hard, darling. You need to relax once in a while. Live! Enjoy your youth! There's inspiration to be found in hedonism, you know. No, I don't know, but apparently you do. <laughs> I'm an authority on the subject, darling. Ask Mickey. She'll tell you I don't lift a finger around the place unless I absolutely have to. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh... Pity Trouble Games, yeah, yeah, uh, Ragnar Tarnquist is decidedly Gen X, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely, uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, Comptar, the game predicted DLC, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> Adam says they have a, a pixel, yeah. <laughs> I didn't mind my pixel too much. I have a Samsung Galaxy now, and that one's giving me a lot of trouble. Where's everybody this morning? Mickey's tied up in the basement. Mind you, she's not literally tied up, of course. Although, that is a tempting thought. Are you getting into your sexual fantasies here, Fiona? Because it's a little too early in the morning for that, don't you think? Sorry, I just can't help myself. Anyway, the plumbing is... You probably noticed when you took a shower, yeah? There's no hot water. So Mickey's working on that. Getting knee-deep in putrid canal water is her job. Thank God. What about Charlie? He up yet? No, he's still sleeping. And Emma just went to bed. I saw her come in when I was making breakfast. Do you know who she's seeing now? I don't know. Some guy? Those lads I see her with, darling. She's too good for those assholes. I wish she'd find herself a man who'd treat her right for once. She hasn't had much luck with love, no? She's a magnet for creeps, and she's so pretty. They prey on her, you know, bastards. I've tried to talk to her about it, but Emma's impulsive. She doesn't listen. She's just as headstrong as you and me, darling, but I'm sure she'll be all right. She's smart and resourceful, and not afraid to speak up for herself. <laughs> oh, but I like the dialogue a lot. I like, I like <laughs> Fiona's dialogue here. Can I ask you a few questions? Why, certainly, darling. About what? What's up with Zack Lee? Zack? I think we both feel the same way about him, darling. He's not actually a bastard. If he was, I'd have had him out of here in an instant. But he is an ass, and a stuck-up, pompous, arrogant wanker. My thoughts, exactly. Aside from that wanker bit. Still, he pays his rent on time and he doesn't make a lot of noise. He keeps to himself. And most importantly, he's shit scared of me. So I can't just kick him out. <laughs> what did you think of me when we first met? That's a peculiar question, isn't it? I thought you were quite lovely. I still do, darling. Do you remember the day I arrived? Of course, darling. It wasn't that long ago, and I'm not senile quite yet. It was in May, wasn't it? Charlie referred you to me, and you were quite at a loss. First day in the city, wasn't it? I remember. You looked like a lost puppy. Puppy? Me? When I saw you lugging that suitcase across the bridge, my heart went out to you. 
I'm glad you came here. You could have been lost anywhere else. I think that's the way every landlord <laughs> that interacts with young people feels, though. They're like, oh, I'm so fair. They'll be screwed over by anyone else. And it's like, yeah, you're all the same. You realize that, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> as nice as Fiona seems, I'm sure she's overcharging. <laughs> How long have you and Mickey been together? Mickey and I have been together since I was 19. She was in her late 30s then. The older, wiser, worldly woman. I found her sweet and charming and intriguing. When I finally realized she was neither of those things, it was too late. <laughs> I was in love. She stole me away from my dreary British inner city life and she brought me here. She was no knight in shining armor, that's for sure. She knew how to treat me like a woman. You guys make a great couple. You think so, darling? Yes, I guess we do. And the sex is amazing. You never get tired of talking about your sex life, do you? Never. And if I ever do, please shoot me. Nobody sees a red flag in, what, in any of what she just said, though. Oh, oh well. <laughs> How long have you known Charlie? Oh, he's one of our oldest tenants. It's close to three years, I believe, since he moved in. Charlie is always in a good mood, and he's such a gentleman. I agree. He's an actual, genuine gentleman. And you don't see a lot of gentlemen these days, trust me. You have a very good friend in him, darling. Perhaps even more than a friend. What do you mean, more than a friend? Not for me to say, darling. If you don't realize it yet, you will. Tell me about Emma. Emma? Why, she's your best friend, darling. I don't know what to tell you that you don't already know. You girls are so close. That's true. The day we met, we clicked instantly. It was strange, but cool. Like me and Mickey, then. Except for the sex, of course. That's a pretty big except for Fiona. Oh, I guess so. She's the crazy one, Emma is. Not crazy as in mad as a hatter, but crazy in a good way. Fun to be around. Emma's always been a little weird. Exactly, darling. She's a flirt, too, and the boys seem to drop like flies at her feet. No wonder. She's a real looker, I don't have to tell you. I'm sure she could have been a model if she'd wanted, but she's an artist, and a good one, too. I really think she'll be a successful artist. Her sculptures are getting a lot of attention. What can you tell me about Venice? I don't really know much about the history of Venice. You should really ask someone with an interest in local affairs. What I do know is that this whole neighborhood used to be an industrial area, and that about 100 years ago, they converted most of the buildings into residences for students and the homeless. And it's a nice place to live, certainly. Friendly people, liberal attitudes, great clothing stores, quite perfect, aside from that dreadful stench from the canals in the summertime. I'm trying to imagine anyone in this country converting anything into home housing for the homeless, because that certainly doesn't happen around here. I remember back home we had a uh, abandoned fire station, and the proposal was to turn it into uh, housing for the homeless, and, you know... That, that got shot down. Just a bunch of NIMBYs showed up and were like, No! No! <sighs> NIMBYs, what are you going to do? I don't have any more questions right now. Don't hesitate asking if there's something else you want to know. Shouldn't you be outside enjoying the good weather? You joking? Bollocks to that. I'll stay inside until September, thank you very much. It's too bloody hot. 
Sounds like a good idea to me. I'd better get going. Off to school. Yeah, there are no more classes this semester, but I have to finish my painting by next Thursday. For what it's worth, darling, good luck. And don't work too hard, all right? Alright, got a matchbook. Do not remember what that's for. Shelves. The omnipresent screen. I don't pretend to know how it works, but all the data apparently passes through tiny little black holes in the fabric of our dimension. You know, that really freaks me out when I think about it. Be considerate. Keep the volume down after 11 p.m. Fiona. Pizza and movie night, Monday, July 31st. B-Y-O-S. B-Y-O what? Soap? Common room, duty roster, July 27th. April and Emma. Oh joy, manual labor, my favorite. Look, it's monkey boy. I can't tell what that note's saying as long as it's up there. Fiona's handwriting is not particularly legible. Okay, looks like I need that for something. I'm sorry, but big sweaty jocks do not turn me on. I'll take a nerd any day. And that's how you know this was written by a man. <laughs> I'm teasing. Annual Summer Blowout at the Fringe Cafe, Friday, August 4th, 8 p.m. Free food, live performances by Royn Dale, Harlequin Masquerade, The Go-Getters. Tickets available at the bar, $10 only, spread the word. I love this mural. Even though the motif is a little trite. I mean, fairy tale forests and magical dragons? Still, it's pretty. I wonder what happened to the artist. Probably making a bundle from cheesy fantasy calendars and book covers. Oh no, I remember this puzzle. <laughs> That's probably Mickey's handiwork. She's the tool gal around these here parts. I wonder why she put the clamp there, though. What a mystifying contraption, and completely absurd. What are all these valves and wheels and thingamajigs for? What grand purpose does it all serve? It won't budge. The pressure's probably too high. I think I need the rubber ducky for this. Oh, yeah. Senorita. Yes? How are you this morning, Senorita Bonita? I'm fine. And you? Sunshine and pretty senoritas give an old man like me the blues. I like my days cold and rainy. In fact, I think I prefer the world to be in black and white. Like an old movie? Like all good movies. But tell me, Senorita Ryan, how would you describe your perfect day? <laughs> yeah, usually if you see... I would think if you see creepy old guys sitting outside your dorm, talking, trying to talk you up, and you're like 19, you just run screaming in the other direction. Am I wrong? Like, just in general. <laughs> I think that would be a good response, is just to be like, Yeah, I'm not talking to you. Bye! <laughs> Hot and sunny like this one. Well then, you should be happy to be alive today, yes? It is a perfect day. But you are not happy, are you? 
You are troubled by nightmares. Okay, bye. I'm leaving. What? <laughs> you are afraid of them. You even fear your dreams may be real. Who told you about my nightmares? No one. I can tell from looking into your eyes. I see the ghosts that haunt you. I don't know who you've been talking to, but from now on, stay the hell away from me in my personal life. No puedo, señorita Ryan. You have a destiny. Destiny? I don't care what you think. Just, just leave me alone. If you don't face them, I'm afraid your nightmares will continue. Soon they will appear to you even when you're awake. You need some serious help, you know that? Do not agitate we the crazy old man. April. That's the reason we are here, you and just me. Just don't interact with him, That's period. That's it. I don't have to listen to this. Perdóname. I've upset you. We didn't think you'd react this way. I hope we can talk again soon. I don't think so, no. Please, think about it. And señorita, cuidado. Be careful. Like, am I wrong? I think the proper response is just not, not, no interaction. Told the clock stopped on the very day of the infamous Venice massacre in 2109 to the minute the police opened fire on the squatters. Hmm. How do I get under the window? So this is the cafe where she works. I don't think I've ever seen anybody pass through that door. Isn't that peculiar? And if I was Nancy Drew, I might actually care. The Fringe Cafe, my home away from home. I really don't mind working there. It's a nice place. I mean, it ranks nice on a scale from begging for food at the bottom to just scraping by at the top. I do not intend to make a career of it. The door's locked. That's weird. I don't think the cafe's ever been closed, at least not since I started working here. There's a sign on the door. Closed for maintenance. We'll reopen at 3 p.m. What's going on? The place was fine last night. If I turn that wheel, would the drain pipes of the universe open up and swallow all solid matter? It could happen. If I turn that wheel, would the drain pipe... Just a wooden bench.
The shades are drawn. Hey, wow! I can see right into the common room. That's amazing. It's a pretty it's a, it's a pretty mural. Hmm. It's a pretty mural. Rust is the very definition of Venetian architecture. Think of San Francisco without the hills, Paris without the cafes, Venice wouldn't be the same without the rust. It would be better. Not the Okay, let's see here. Oh, I'll worry about fixing the, the pipes later. Go to the subway. Uh, or do I go to the park? out here all day long all year he never stops painting ever and I doubt he's ever finished even one painting I, I can't even begin to guess what that's supposed to be Cubist, and not my style at all. Bishop and Anne Marie. He's a photography student. She's in my life study class. Nice couple. It's the official VAVA notice board. Only registered students are allowed to put notices up here. The annual VAVA Summer Exhibit, August 11th through 18th. God, I'm actually expected to be ready by then. Hey, Aaron. No, I've got too much to do right now. No, I've got too much to do right now. The Venice Academy of the Visual Arts. World renowned, prestigious, expensive, and my future alma mater, if all goes well with the exhibition and I get my grant, that is. That's Mary Sam, Vava's founding mother and pro Venice activist back before the riots. She was assassinated by a corporate hired gun right after the school opened some 90 years ago. Let's see here. Rubber glove. Oh, we want that. Uh, okay, Aaron. I think you might be the only one here right now. Why would somebody toss out a perfectly good work glove with just one big hole in it? What a terrible, terrible waste. Olaf's on a roll. Again. Does that guy ever run out of inspiration or energy? Must be the cold Norwegian winters. Nothing else to do but paint. Uh, Aaron, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Comtar sent in the sequel to this one to, to the Video Game Valley, uh, last week. Don't want to disturb him. Art books. There's a really nice one here on Turner. I love his landscapes. Uh, but this is by, uh, Ragnar Tornquist. I think, um, the company's Funcom, they were best known for doing like, oh, hey, Adam, okay, you are here, um, they did that one MMO, I'm trying to think what it was called, um,
Anarchy Online. That was it. I think they also did like uh, the, that short-lived Conan MMO. I can only think of two things more depressing than a blank canvas. Death and taxes. Emma's really good with the Hala sculptor, and her imagination is so vivid. Good thing we're best friends, or I might be jealous. A Hala sculptor. <laughs> so, a 3D printer, basically. The tools of my trade. The best thing about working up here is that nobody borrows my stuff. Uh, Aaron, uh, I think this came out in 1999, 2000, thereabouts. Shortly before Anarchy Online did, I think. These sinks are as old as the building itself, but at least they've been renovated quite recently. I'm way past finger painting. I need a paintbrush and palette. Hiya. Emma? Hi! I didn't expect to see you here today. Me neither. Are you busy? Nah. Well, I am. But I was about to wrap up for today anyway. Why? What's going on? I have an important message for you. What's the message? Believe it or not, girl, but it's from Cortez. He wants to meet you. These are his exact words. Where children visualize their dreams. Visualize dreams? What's that supposed to mean? Me? I was hoping you would know. I think Cortez is the old man. Did he say anything else? Nope, that was it. Why does he want to meet you? Oh, don't tell me. You guys are having a secret love affair. Oh, yeah. We're eloping and flying to Africa tonight. It's all been happening so fast. My heart's a flutter. Oh, how romantic. I couldn't imagine a better catch than Senor Cortez, the Latin lover. <laughs> Did he talk to you about nightmares? No. Why? I don't know. It's just... My dreams are really starting to bother me. There you go again with dreams. You're obsessing, April. They're just dreams. Sometimes a banana is just a banana. Cigar. Cigar? What do you mean, cigar? Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar, not a banana. Whatever. The point is, you're reading too much into your dreams. I'm sure they're perfectly logical. Even a talking dragon? Is a talking dragon logical? Especially a talking... dragon? You had a dream about a dragon? Okay, that's not logical. That's just silly. Still, this ought to be interesting. Go on. Well, there was a dragon. I think we established that already. You had a dream about a dragon. Not just any dragon, though. A talking dragon. Yep, we've been through that. Talking dragon covered. What did it say? She. It was a she, a female dragon. What, you could tell from the skirt, high heels, and lipstick? Don't mock me, Emma. She said something to me. Something about being the mother of the future. She probably said time to get up and go to school, April. If you don't want to take my dreams seriously, I'll just stop telling you about them. Is that a promise? Like you're in any position to make fun of my dreams? Have you looked at your sculptures lately? Oh, that's low. I'd punch you out if I wasn't so hungry. You want to go get some lunch at the Fringe? 
I'll drop by after I clean up around here. I'll be there for a while, so bye. I think you're like, April should know that you don't talk to people about your dreams unless you... <laughs> unless you're paying them, you know? <laughs> no one wants to hear about your dreams unless... <laughs> I'm sure they meant for that to be a, a jump scare, but it, it didn't really work in this. Uh, it's Emma's contribution to the exhibition. Third person perspective. I have no perspective. idea what it is, and neither apparently does she. But it looks absolutely beautiful. Nice hair color. I like how she says that like it's unusual to have pink hair. I can actually take the subway yet. Uh oh. I have to get scanned. Jumping gates in the Newport subway is a corporate offense liable to get me five years behind bars if I'm lucky. Uh oh. I'll get a weekly pass just in case. already pushed the button. Let's see. According to the instructions, I push a button with a stylized hand, wave my cash card in front of the round thingy, and then stand still for a few seconds. Good. Stand still. Okay, so she doesn't have enough money right now, right? I'm sorry, but the fare is $15. You have one dollar left on your cash card. This message was brought to you by the Bocamba Mercer Company. 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 The, the future spells Bocamba Mercer. Damn. I don't have enough money on my card. I have to remember to get paid for last week's work at the cafe. Newport Transit System. It's not one system anymore, though. All the different lines are owned by different companies. This is the Metro Line, and I believe it's run by Vokamba Mercer. Well, at least we haven't fit, hit the point where public transportation is run by corporations yet. Getting close.
are in trouble, don't they know that skateboarding is strictly prohibited in Newport? should have the good sense to do that kind of stuff behind closed doors. At least as long as I don't have a boyfriend. It amazes me why backpackers flock to Newport. You'd think they'd have the good sense to stick to India, Australia, and the near-Earth colonies. That's my good friend Charlie. He was the first person I met when I came to Venice, and I love him dearly. As a friend. That's my, well, Emma's friend, really. Marcus. He's a VAVA student as well. I think Marcus actually shows up in... He's like the only one of these characters that shows up in Dreamfall. He's a bad guy. Tom's Follies. The Cotton Queen. No, she actually seems to have a crush on, on Charlie in this game. But, like, he never comes up again in, in Dreamfall or anything like that. Hi, Charlie. April. Nice to see you, girl. You know, I came to wake you this morning, but you had already left. Early Bird catches the worm. No, Early Bird finishes the damn painting on time. <laughs> I can agree with that, Kitty, yeah. Dreamfall made some decisions, I'll say that. I, I enjoyed it overall, though. Why was the cafe closed earlier? Uh, you know, some problem with the pipes. Stan, he gets real worked up. He is seriously pissed, girl keeps yelling at the plumber to fix it, or Stan will fix him. And the poor man is trying to work, but Stan doesn't quit. The plumber finds the problem eventually, but not until he's waist high in canal water down in the basement. Ooh, gross. There were problems with the plumbing back at the house, too. No hot water. I noticed. Girl, that was one cold shower. There are always problems with the pipes here in Venice. They're too old. You doing anything special tonight? Working. I should really be at rehearsal, but I need the money. I'm going home for a week before school starts in September. Right, you told me. Well, that's great. It's been years since your last trip home, right? Yeah, right. You remember well, girl. Four years. My father and I, well... We haven't been on good terms since I left. I know how that feels. Isn't it such a cliché, though? I don't look forward to seeing him again, but it will be nice to be back with the rest of the family. Especially my sisters, you know, and my mom. Have you seen Cortez around? As a matter of fact, I have. And he was asking for you. Do you have any idea where kids would be able to, um, visualize their dreams? Maybe in therapy? <laughs> I don't think that's it, Charlie. Then I don't know. Thanks. Anytime, April. I have to get going, Charlie. Take care, alright? 
Remember, you're supposed to get paid today. Stan's not gonna remember unless you bug him about it. What are you doing here? I... You ain't working this afternoon, are you? I don't want my employees to work 24 hours a day. Go, get sleep. But I'm just... Damn, woman, do I have to babysit you? It's nice to see you too, Stanley. No, I'm not working today. I just came by to... Oh, don't ever say those two words when I'm around. I don't think my ulcer can take it. You? And nice? That's funny. No, working and not. Don't use those two words in the same sentence. Damn, I get creeps even when I say them. He's a nice guy. I'd like to get paid. Damn, woman, don't you know I got a migraine already? Paid? God damn it. Why they have to make that word sound so obscene? Listen, why don't you leave old Stan alone, huh? It makes me feel a whole hell of a lot better. Choo, choo, be good, little girl, hmm? I'd still like to get paid, though. Mighty man, our woman. You really know how to rub it in. God damn it. Yeah, all right. Got your time sheet? No. No? Well, you just want me to pay you based on the hours you claim you've worked? Yes? You really do know how to make me laugh. Why don't I just give you the code in my unicard so you can withdraw your salary yourself? No time sheet, no money. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Charlie. What's up, April? Mind if I ask you a few questions, Charlie? Why would I mind, girl? Thanks, Charlie. All right, where do I get the time sheet? I'm trying to remember. I'll see you later, Charlie. Later. I'm sure Stan won't notice if I dig gently into his supply. He's got crates of these in the back. Intermittently since I was five oh, years is. old. Hey, it's my timesheet from the cafe. I completely forgot I put it in here. Good thing I found it because I'm broke. Uh, I need to run for a minute. I'll be right back. Uh, please enjoy the music.
Okay, sorry about that, I'm back. It's my diary. Hi, Serenus. Good yeah, to see yeah. you. What do you want now? Listen, about my pay. Lord Almighty, everybody wants money from old Stan. But who signs his paychecks? Hmm? No goddamn body, that's who. You run the place, Stan. We're employees, remember? You're our employer. You're supposed to pay us a salary. Goddamn labor lords. All right, you got your timesheet, honey? Yes, I do. My ulcer is acting up. My migraine's killing me. Hand it over, woman. Let's be done with it, huh? Or you can walk out that door and forget about the whole thing. Your choice. <laughs> Doesn't seem like Here a great place to work to me. Sheet. Don't say that word too loud, sweetheart. You're killing me. See. What is this? Huh? No, 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 no. Did I sign this? What are you thinking? So? At least it doesn't look like it's been forged. Thanks. Thanks? Where's my money? Oh, you ain't getting it now. Next week, honey. I write down this amount in my ledger. Don't you worry your head for it. Forget that. I quit. You're quitting? You can't quit. You work for me. Nobody quits this job, honey. I can quit, and I'm quitting. I quit. Damn woman, you know how hard it is to find people to take a crappy job like this one? I need you. Just as much as you need the money? All right, Jesus, I give you your damn money. What was it, 50 bucks? $375, Stanley, cash. Oh, sure, cash. Three hundred? Are you sure? I pay you guys way too much. All right, give me your CC. Thank you, Stanley. Fine, sure, whatever. Hey, just I mean it. You free tonight? Wanna pull a shift? Sandra, she out sick and I need a replacement pronto. How about it? Yeah, I need the money. Great, hon. I'll see you here later. Don't forget. this one for us, April. When did Roin Dale release Sidetracked? 04, right after the Morning Star exile, those sons of bitches. With blood on their boots. Yeah, <laughs> told you so, Marcus. You said 03. I was closer than you, 07, and you call yourself a fan. I don't. Did you speak with Zach today? Why? He was upset. Called you a stuck-up bitch. He what? You gotta be kidding me. I wasn't even that rude to him. He thinks so. So that even if you came crawling to his door, he wouldn't give you the time of day. Said you called him an asshole. Oh, God. I really don't know when to shut my mouth, do I? Who cares? It's Zack. He hates you, so what? No great loss. That's true. So, what else is going on? What are you doing this afternoon? Mind if I ask you some questions, Emma? 
Like I don't tell you everything that's going on anyway? Of course you can ask me questions. Like, duh. Did you finish your sculpture for the exhibit? Pretty much. I'm happy with it, and I know that if I go back and keep working on it, I'll just kill it. So I think I'll leave it alone. You? You know what? Don't ask. I'm praying it'll finish itself one of these days. Sure. Could happen. It could so happen. But I wouldn't count on it. <sighs> I'll have it ready in time. Yes, you will, or I'll kick your ass so hard that you'll... Okay, I got it, I got it! Thanks for the inspiration. Thanks, Emma. Thanks for what? For talking to you? Girlfriend, what the hell is the matter with you? Snap out of it! I gotta run. See you around. It's a rusty... thingy. It's a pretty mural. It's, it's a rusty... thingy. Organic plastic. It grows, and it converts carbon dioxide into oxygen, just like real plants, but it doesn't need nourishment of any kind. Convenient, but disturbing. I think I need one of the leaves from this thing for some reason. Anybody have any recollection on how to get the rubber ducky? It's a seagull. The poor guy looks quite hungry. Spiky. I still haven't figured out what runs through the canals in Venice, but I'm sure it can't be water. Rubber ducky, you're the one. You make bath time oh so fun. It's a pretty mural. The alarm is active, but it can't be very effective with the doors wide open like that. Still, there's always somebody around, so I guess we're safe. Whoops! Was that me? Let's see here. Yeah, let's try using the subway.
I'll get a weekly pass, just in case. Just in case. Okay, why can't I go into my inventory? There we go. $15 subtracted from cash card. You are now free to travel on all Metroline subways for exactly one year. And remember, genetic forgery is a federal crime. Keep your genes clean. Have a nice day. Wait, where to? I'm not getting on the train until I know exactly where I'm going. Hmm. Okay. Emma's brain, I don't know. Howdy. What's up, Emma? What are you doing? Staying here. What else? I'm meeting a friend later, but that's not until nine. We're waiting for Isabel and then we're gonna eat. But I guess you're not hungry. No. Figures. I don't know why I even bother asking. Who's this? friend you're meeting later. Don't tell me it's that guy you were out with last night. Are you gonna tell me I shouldn't get involved with men like him? No, no, of course not. I'm not your... You don't need me to tell you that, Emma. Well, I wish you would, because you're right. I shouldn't, he's a bastard. But he's so cute and charming and... You know, very good in bed. I, I just can't help myself. But he's not a keeper, don't worry about that. It's just this thing, just a fling. Maybe the two of you should try to, you know, like, pass the Bechdel test? <laughs> Actually, I came by to see if I could find Cortez. What's with you and this guy? You'd rather spend time with him than us? I have to find out what the message means. Don't look at me. I don't know anything except what I already told you. Ask Charlie. He spoke with Cortez earlier. I have a couple of more questions. Yes, Inspector? Did you speak with Charlie today? Yeah, for a few minutes. Why? Nothing. Just wondered is all. Uh, April, did he say anything to you at all? About what? About... Mm, nothing. I mean, I don't know anything. Which isn't true because I, I don't lie, but he... Ugh, forget it. If we were having this conversation in a movie, I'd be going, like... Shit, girl, get your act together! Open your eyes! But I don't think that's a good idea. Not in real life. Because real life has a nasty habit of hurting people's feelings. What's your... 
Uh, take on Cortez. My take on Cortez. What's that, like a diplomatic way of saying what the F is this guy's glitch? Sure, let's go with that one. You know, I think Cortez is a barrel of laughs, in a good way. Everybody thinks they got him all figured out, you know? Like he's the resident weirdo. But I know that just ain't true. I've talked with Cortez, and the guy is brilliant. He's weird, yeah, and he's up in the clouds, and I think he believes in aliens, which is cool, but girl, he's smart. I mean, I'm not talking professor smart here. I'm talking real life, seen it all, been there, done that, smart. Useful smart. Experienced smart. And, ooh, I gotta tell you, the guy's cultured. Ask him about anything, art, music, movies, books. He's current on most topics, which scares me, because it seems he's always just, I don't know, hanging around doing nothing. He rarely goes anywhere. And it's like he's waiting for something. Or someone. Yeah, maybe Jerry Garcia. <laughs> You're bad. No, I don't think he's a doper. I mean, listen to the guy. What he says may sound a little out there, but the way he says it... No, he's not on Amethyn, that's for sure. And one more thing. He is cute. He's what? Cute. Emma, he's like 60. Did you ever see his eyes? Those are not the eyes of an old man. And so what if he's 60? He's better looking than most of the guys I date, and so much nicer. Then I think you've been swimming in the shallow end of the gene pool for too long, Emma. I mean, come on, a 60-year-old screwball with a ponytail and an exotic accent? Hello? <sighs> well, we'll see. That's it. See you later. Bye. There are many parts of that conversation that I find kind of cringy. <laughs> I like my outfit. It's inexpensive, but cool. Hi, Charlie. What's up, April? You said Cortez. Yeah. Do you know where? No, but he seemed interested in that poster next to the jukebox. They put it up earlier today. Thanks. Anytime. I'll see later. Let's see here. Roma Gallery presents Growing Pains. Exhibition by and for kids and teenagers. Could this be what Cortez was talking about? Where kids visualize their dreams? I think this may be it. Where's the Roma Gallery located? It's a jukebox, according to Stan. It's an original. Almost 200 years old. I don't know. That looks like a replica to me. A good replica, but still... It took some convincing, but Stan finally agreed to put the jukebox on free play. I'll just choose a track at random. You gotta put crumbs on Howdy. the... What's up? Not much. Okay. I think I see what you're saying, Kitty. Okay, put crumbs on the rubber ducky. I have a couple of... Yes, that's it. See you later. Bye. Where do I get crumbs? Let's see here. Work glove. Assorted candy. Oh, God, it's awful. It tastes like mouthwash. It's a sticky, half-eaten piece of candy. Okay. I got candy. And now I got sticky candy. All right, I'm probably going to need that later. Hi, Charlie. What's up? food on the table. Okay. Do you have any idea where I can find the Roma Gallery? Roma Gallery? 
I seem to remember... They have a poster next to the... Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember they put up that poster. The address must be written down somewhere, yeah? Did you check? I'll see... Later. It's kind of unsettling to be so aware of myself. Oh, yeah, there's bread there. Okay. Okay. I'm not particularly hungry. Hmm. It's a poster ad for an ex- I never- Okay, there's the ticket. Okay. It's the address. The gallery's located near the Watertown Bridge. It's all the way over in West Venice, if I remember correctly. I'm gonna have to catch the Metro Line subway to get there. Big surprise. I'm still here. Might just be used bread. Okay. I used the rubber ducky to fix the the water, right? Like it it pops and then you put it in the use the rubber glove with the hole in it as well to to patch the hole that's being clamped or something like that, right? It's a clothesline. Okay, let me see here. Okay, so the seagull's gonna peck the thing and break it, right? Plastic coated clothesline. Okay. All right, we're making some progress, right, guys? Let's see here. Yes, that's a pressure gauge. It's at 100. That's percent, I guess. 100% pressure? Mystifying. 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 Okay, there's... The cables are too far apart to tie them back together. Looks like a big piece of cable was torn off. Nada. Nothing. Nada. Nothing. Mystifying. It won't budge. The pressure's probably too high.
It's a rubber glove, but it's pretty useless with that big ho monkey see? Monkey do. Well, not without this he won't. It's a matchbook from the Fringe Cafe. It's at 100. That's percent, I guess. Oh, mystifying, mystifying. The water tank's full. Okay, there goes the ducky. I know that duck. Bon voyage, ducky! I guess try going to the subway. Ladies just ain't what they used to be. The screen really is ubiquitous. There's no escape anywhere. Oops, not what I meant to do. All right. There is something on the tracks there, too, huh? Maybe I should have a look at that. I don't think... Sweet old ladies just ain't what they used to be. Sweet old ladies just ain't what they used to be. <laughs> There's actually an ad for Surge on here. <laughs> I wonder if they had a sponsorship. They say the first motor function to suffer is always rhythm. Big sound from such a small box. Poor guys drugged out on Amethyn. They say the first motor function to suffer is always rhythm. Another victim of Amethyn. Hello, sir. Sir! I'll just leave my ticket here then, shall I? Yes. Yes, I guess I'll do that. It's a pointy-edged swan. It's a short, nude creature with a snout. Very... inspiring. About time you showed up. About time? I spent more than... Mira, this painting. Right here. Look. You brought me all the way down here to look at a painting? Yes. But there's more. Just look at it. Who's the artist? A boy named Warren Hughes. Not so long ago, I knew him and his family quite well. 
but he does not paint anymore. It's nice work. It's very nice. But there's more to it than nice. Keep looking. What am I looking for? What do you see? I see a statement on loss. The guy, he's hugging a girl, and by all rights, he should be happy, but he's not. He's probably already mourning the loss of her, even though that's still somewhere in his future. Statements? Who cares about his statements? Tell me what you see. I see an oil painting of two humans locked in an embrace. That's all you see? But there's so much more. Look. Look. I see art. Art, yes. And beyond that. Beyond art. Illusion. Skill and imagination allow the artist to create an illusion. But that is only skin deep. Beneath the illusion. What else is there? Truth? Truth. Exactly. A deeper truth. This painting, this particular work of art, speaks a deeper truth. It has a soul. How can a painting have a soul? It has a soul because it has an identity. It has a heart. The memory of this painting will survive beyond this moment. It will linger in your mind, become part of the tapestry of your subconscious. It has made a lasting impression on you, and you're not quite sure why. It's just a painting by some kid. It's not as if it's a Picasso or a Monet. Now your arguing technique. Not every painting by Van Gogh or Michelangelo is real art either, although they all demonstrate great technique and, and craftsmanship. And the scribbled drawings of a five-year-old child are rarely technically impressive, but they may still have a soul. They may still be real art. So you're saying real art is not defined by the skill of the artist? Then what is art? If just anybody can create something more real than artists who've spent their entire lives developing their skills? Art is still the work of artists. And skill, craftsmanship, technique, those things are critical to the success of an artist's work. But alone, those things are merely pretense. For something to be real, to be truthful, the artist must transfer, shift part of him or herself into the work to transcend the illusion and reach for the truth of art. And what is the truth of art? Who knows? I've been asking myself that question for years. Excuse me? You don't even know? And what's all this about all the questions and lectures on truth and delusion? For that matter, why did you ask me to come down here in the first place? Because... Actually, you didn't even ask me to come down. I spent my entire afternoon traveling all over Venice, deciphering a cryptic message, spending money I don't have on a subway ticket, only to have to stand here and listen to... to... You saw something this afternoon. A waking dream, and you can't explain it. That's why you are here, isn't it? Didn't I tell you to stay out of my personal life? Yes. Yes, you did. But I chose not to listen. My point about art and truth is this, April. Some things look real, but are not. And other things may appear to be of no consequence at all, but are in fact invaluable. Like Warren's painting here. And your dreams. There is both truth and illusion in dreams, and in the images they create. The problem is in sorting the one from the other. You're telling me my dreams are true? I'm telling you there are things afoot, and that you need help in sorting the truth from the illusions. My help. Well, that figures. Good. I was hoping you'd understand. No. Actually, I didn't understand a single word 
You talk about art and truth and dreams and illusions, and I still don't understand what it all has to do with me. There are things happening, yes, and I came here because I thought, maybe you're crazy enough to believe me, to help me. I don't know, sort through the debris and come up with the plausible explanation. But no, you tell me my dreams might be true, that I need your help, and that there are things afoot. I mean, who says afoot? I've never heard anybody use the word before. There are things afoot. Está bien. I understand your reluctance to believe me, señorita. But I cannot convince you here, now. Meet me tomorrow. What? Meet me tomorrow, and I will tell you everything. Not again. No way. But you will. Because you are compelled to do so by your own curiosity. Because you are drawn to mystery. And because despite your skepticism, you believe I have the answer to all your questions, yes? No. No, I don't care. I just want to have a normal life. No nightmares, no visions, no strangers telling me that things are afoot. Comprende, amigo? Ay, Dios mío. Is that the time? I've got to run, Senorita Ryan. I'll see you tomorrow, then. I said... Goodbye. It's a short nude. There's absolutely it's a pointy edged swan. I'd be mad too. That's all pretty cryptic and frustrating. <laughs> Dude's just creepy. Have you been sitting here all day? Pretty much, darling. I feel like a vegetable. How was your day, then? It's been a weird day. How so? Well, you know how some mornings you wake up, but you're not sure if you're really awake or if you're still just dreaming? I feel like that every morning, darling. A pot of black coffee cures that in a flash. That's how I've been feeling all day. Like I said, it's been a weird day. How was yours? Exceedingly ordinary. Almost depressingly so. I poked my head out of the door once for about a second, but thought better of it. I'll see you later, yeah? All right, darling. to make my bed. It's been too hot to sleep with a cover. It's been too hot to sleep with a cover. So I don't. I still haven't figured out what runs through the canals in Venice, but I'm sure it can't. I don't know what that I don't know what that chain's for. I don't know what that chain's for, but it's connected to some kind of mechanism at the bottom of the canal. Spiky. Whatever those pipes I'm trying to think what my next step is. I thought I could just go back to sleep and skip to the next day. Emma picked this table up at a flea market for $10 last month. That's $9 more than it's worth. 
It's a pretty mural. It's, it's a pretty mural. I don't think there's anything important in the diary. Huh, it's getting hot here. The weather doesn't want it doesn't know what it wants to do lately. Hi Charlie. What's up? How's work? Aside from the trouble with the plumbing, everything's been peaceful. Emma's here with Marcus and Isabel. Everyone must be home. Oh, on Perfect. You should I think I prefer this heat to the heat I got at home. You're safe now, yeah? We take care of you, April. You do. I'm lucky. It's not luck. You're a good person. And you deserve good friends. You help me out when I'm in a state, yeah? You're always in a good mood, Charlie. Yeah, but you never know. You're there if I ever need you. I know that. I'll see you later. Later. Hi, Charlie. What's up? I'll see later. I'm all scrubbed and ready to work, sir. You'll be on the floor tonight, honey. Start taking orders. Creature from the art exhibition. <gasps> Little old man's like, oh man. I've got to find Cortez and get him to explain <laughs> what the hell's going on. Insane or not, he's the only person I can talk to about this. It's almost like the mole man's like, okay, am I the one that did too many, too many drugs, or is it you? Did your tongue stick to the window pane again, Fiona? Did you ever question your own sanity, April? I mean, did you ever wonder if you were going mad? I'm quite certain I am insane. I'm not trying to amuse you, April. I'm really serious. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, I felt like that. 
Many times. Then explain it to me. How do you deal with it? Do you lock it away inside yourself, or do you talk to someone about it? Because I'm at a loss here, April. I don't know what to do. You have to give me more to go on than that. I don't know how I can put it into words. What I saw... What did you see? Last night, right here in this room, Mickey and I, we were watching a movie, a documentary about the new synthetic rainforests in Mexico. You know, the ones that produce eight times the oxygen of the original organic forests. I've heard about... But I'm digressing. Anyway, about halfway through the movie, like I said, I'm probably going completely bonkers. This room became a... a it was more like a vision, really, and I'm sure it wasn't holographic. What kind of vision? This room turned into a forest. What? It was like the forest came out of the screen and into the room. Like being in the middle of a hollow theater, but with added resolution, hallucinogenic effects, and... and smells. It only lasted for a few seconds, and then it all just disappeared. Did anyone else see this? Mickey did, but she refuses to speak of it. Says it was just our imagination acting up, which leaves me wondering how long it'll take before I end up in a mental institution. I've been seeing strange things lately too. Like what? Last night, at the cafe, right in front of everybody, this creature appeared out of thin air. Just like your forest. It was only there for a few seconds and then it disappeared, but everybody saw it. Everybody. Oh my. What's going on, love? I don't scare easily, but this is really getting to me. Don't know. But whatever it is, I think, I'm pretty sure. Cortez is involved. Cortez? How is he involved? I don't know that either. I'd love to find out, though. Have you seen Cortez today? No, darling. I don't think he's around. Do you have any idea where Cortez is? Sorry, he could be anywhere. Well, he does enjoy going uptown to watch old movies in some revival cinema, but where that is, I wouldn't know. Who'd know? Perhaps Zack. He is, after all, the self-appointed film expert around here. You should talk to him, darling. Great. Zack. My very best friend in the whole wide world. Could you tell Cortez I'm looking for him? Certainly, darling. If I happen to see him. Thanks. What other w little things, like... M and noises. The kind you're not supposed to hear in the city. Animal noises. Wild animals. And once... This was very early in the morning, mind, a few days ago. I looked down into the canal and saw what looked like an underwater city. As I looked at it, it dissolved into ripples of water. Scary. You're telling me, darling. I'm scared of cockroaches, for God's sake. What do you think this does to my nerves? I have to get going. Take care of yourself out there, darling. I think if you turn down working at the cafe that evening, you stay at home with uh, Mickey and Fiona and see what they saw. I never imagined I'd be doing this in a million years. Well, well, what do you know? 
princess comes knocking after all. Don't get your hopes up. I think you're the one who's got her hopes up, babe. And you better hope I don't slam this door in your face. Just do me one favor first, okay? Well, give me a reason to, babe. A reason? You want a reason? Okay. What about a date? Yeah. Good. Tonight. Uh, sure. Tonight. I'll meet you at the... Pavilion, was it? And, uh, are you gonna put out? What? Well, I mean, if I'm gonna use my VIP passes and my pills, babe, I just gotta know if it'll be worth it or not. You on? We'll see, Zach. Yeah, just don't do a Houdini and vanish on me, babe. If you're a no-show and I wait around for you all night, I end up looking like an asshole. And that wouldn't make me very happy. I'll be a good girl and show. Smart. So, uh... What do you want to know? You know where I can find Cortez? Cortez, yeah? I knew there was something going on between you guys. Don't be ridiculous, Zack. It's not what you think. Whatever. Hey, like I give a shit? You're with me tonight, and by tomorrow morning, I don't think you'll find that old creep so appealing anymore. So, where is Cortez? Uh, when he's not outside reading or whatever the hell he does, he's usually at the Mercury Theater. They show old movies on real celluloid stock through a projector, like in the fucking Middle Ages. Where is this theater located? I don't remember the street it's on. It's been ages since I was there last. But you'll find it if you head out the East Gateway from Metro Circle. It's close to the Radio Power Building, and there are tons of adult stores in the area. Actually, if you're not too busy, you could pick up something for us to watch tonight. Something really filthy. Zack, I don't think... Hey, whatever. I was just kidding, yeah? Babe, you got a major bug up your ass. Get a fucking sense of humor, yeah? I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for the tip... and the info. Just be at the pavilion by ten, okay? I don't like waiting around for babies like you. Got a million better things to do. And it wouldn't be a good idea for you to ditch me. Not a good idea at all. Why you can't just tell her to kick the guy out? Hi. Have the police pick him yes? up. Yes? I don't know. <laughs> What's Metro Circle like? That's the sleaziest and most perverted neighborhood in Newport. On the negative side, however, it's also a dangerous place to hang out. I wouldn't go there alone if I were you. I have to take care of... Yeah, unfortunately we can't. We do get the option of standing him up. But then he just either way he gets mad. If you go on the on go on the date, um you wind up uh um uh she winds up beating him up uh after he tries to force himself on her. Um so either way, it doesn't turn out well. He gets pissed off and... There's a high-voltage cable running parallel with the rail, and something's gotten stuck between them. It looks like a large iron key. But he's just designed to be this huge creep. Hands, but with that frayed high voltage cable. I didn't brush my teeth this morning just so I could be fried bacon with a pretty smile. 
We'll have to find some other way to get the key. Let's see here. The rubber glove doesn't work here. No point fishing without a hook. I won't be able to pull the key back up. Would you believe this is the first thing I saw when I came to Newport? Big city? Gotta love it. It's a police officer. Hold it! You're not taking this elevator. Why? Because you're not carrying proper identification. Didn't you know that's a corporate offense in Newport? In Venice, you don't have to. I see. Venice. I should have known. Step back or I'll be forced to take you down with extreme prejudice. How do I get permission to go through? Only citizens of mid-level status or above are allowed to use these elevators. I guess you're new to this city or you know this. Uh, yeah, fresh from the countryside. You do look like a farm girl, it's true. Hey, watch it! How do you get mid-level status? Birth, money, marriage. Schmucks like you and me, miss. We're stuck here. Speak for yourself, schmuck. What's up with the cops in this city? I'm sorry? I mean, when you arrest people, you read them their rights, and then you sell them products. It's all part of the job, miss. The police department is a subdivision of the Bocamba Mercer Company and the Bingo Corporation. They pay our bills. Doesn't that constitute a conflict of interest? Not if we don't arrest any employees of either company. That makes so not sense. Does when you're faced with the prospect of getting the boot, miss. I have kids, and I'd like to see them through college. Thanks, officer. We're here to protect, serve, and to inform you of the fantastic range of products offered by Bokemba Mercer and Bingo, manufacturers of the world's favorite soft drinks and handguns. Frankly, these days, the cops have more money than some corporations. <laughs>
I always laugh when they get portrayed as, like, working class, because I'm like, eh, some of these guys make, like, you know, about five times what I do in a year just for sitting on their ass and doing nothing. Day. I'll just leave my brush and easel here before I go. Hmm. Okay, I can't take it with me. Alright, so I need a fake ID, clearly. I don't remember how I get that. There's the rubber ducky. Rubber ducky, you're the one. Any nightmares to- After last night, are you kidding? It's a wonder I haven't gone crazy yet. So you're in the true believer crowd, then? What do you mean? What I mean is, a lot of people who were here last night refuse to admit that they saw what they saw. Or they blame it on hidden holographic projectors or drugs in the coffee. That's as good an explanation as any, don't you think? Is it? Among all the alternatives, you'd prefer to believe in a conspiracy? What? And face the fact that we all might be going mad, or that something really bad is happening? Who knows, April? Perhaps sometimes it's better to embrace the mystery rather than trying to explain it. I believe what I see, Charlie. Sometimes I don't even believe that. Anyway, let's not talk about that right now, okay? Okay. I feel like if everybody in the room has the same hallucination, you've got to find a better explanation than drugs in the coffee. <laughs> mind if I ask you a few questions, Charlie? Why would I mind, girl? Thanks, Charlie. here to talk to. Yeah, Serena's, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Frankly, I'd be on the side of just saying, oh, they set up some kind of holographic projection. It's, it's marketing for something. <laughs> some kind of campaign. It's a band-aid. How did that get there? Last I remember, the seagull had pecked a hole in the duck. Ducks inflated. Rubber glove. Patched up and good as new. Hmm. 
kids. The water tank's full. Okay, so the rubber ducky inflates pretty quickly. The duck's inflated. The duck's inflated. Rubber glove. Patched up and good as new. This puzzle is able to sock lock my game. Okay. Mystifying. All right. It won't budge. The pressure's probably too high. Nada. Nothing. It won't budge. The pressure's probably too high. I probably need the key first, right? It's a pretty mural. Okay, so how does the rubber duck soft lock the game? I would have thought they'd have fixed... Didn't they fix that with one of the patches or something? Good as new. So I got the band-aid, plugged up the rubber glove. What was the point of that? Yeah, I really think my response would just be like, okay, if everyone saw the same thing, it's not a hallucination. It's some kind of new marketing campaign. <laughs> They're not going to tell us what it is yet. Probably too high. Oh, yeah, for the forest thing, yeah, I'd be like, how did they get in my house? But. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, this has something to do with, like, microwave emitters or something.
Okay, I found a walkthrough. I'm gonna just go do some of the things with notes here. Oh, that's not working. All right. Hi. Yes. I have to get going. Take care of yourself. Found. A gold ring under the common room sofa. If it's yours, let me know. But no false claims, please. Fiona. I did lose a gold ring a few weeks ago. I hope this is the one. I'll have to ask Fiona about it. There we go. All right. There's some progress. Hi. Yes? I have to get go. Take care. Can I give it to her now? I saw this note on the corkboard. I think the ring might belong to me. I'm sorry I have to ask, but could you describe the ring? Sure thing. It says Sweet Sixteen. My dad gave it to me. I think it was the only birthday of mine he remembered, or at least acknowledged. Yes, that's the one. I found it under the sofa when I was vacuuming. Here you are, darling. Thanks. It's not worth much, but it's got a certain sentimental value for me. It's a very pretty ring. Yeah, yeah it is. My dad never gave me anything pretty before or since. He must have won a poker game or something that day. You know, it's strange. I don't hate him. He's a bastard and he treated me like crap almost every single day of my life. But I don't hate him. I feel sorry for him. Why? Because he doesn't know how to love. He can't love anybody or anything. And because he'll be miserable every second of every minute of every day until the day he dies. God, I'm glad that life is behind me. I hope I never have to see him again. No, that doesn't sound right. I've made a choice not to see him again. Ever. Okay, let's see if this will work. The water tank's full. I hope it doesn't melt or anything. It's alive! Okay. The pressure's probably too high. Oh, of course. Okay. There we go. It won't budge. The pressure's probably too high. All right. They're all facing the same way. I guess I need to get them to be facing left to right. Too high. Okay, what did I do exactly? It's at 100. That's percent, I guess. 100% pressure? Mystifying. Okay. It's at 100. 
that's pretty it won't budge. The pressure's probably too high. Without the ring, I won't be able to use this, um, machine. The ring seems to be working perfectly as a conduit between the two cable ends. Mystifying. 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 Uh, I guess I have... Let me try turning the valve. There we go. Okay. Bingo! The tank's empty. It's a rusty old wheel. I'd imagine it turns the water on and off. I'm not leaving my gold ring. Somebody's going to have to replace that cable eventually. Okay, we turned the water off for the building. <laughs> Probably not the best choice, but let's see here. All right, now I have the clamp. Okay. When I was a wee lass, I tried fishing a couple of times in the pond behind my house, but I never caught anything. I hope my luck's improved. Obviously, this is not gonna work. Clamp's already closed. Uh. It's a clamp. It's a clamp. It's a clamp. She it's got a clothesline tied to it. Can't it's just a clamp. open the clamp? Okay. It's a clamp. Do any good. I need something tight to that won't do any good. I need something tight to keep the clamp open. Hope you're done with work soon, Adam. <laughs> Rubber ducky keeps the clamp open, apparently. catch all right it's a large iron key it's a large iron key Man, it's too hot to sleep well right now. I don't know about you, Adam. How's the weather? I do need so I need the ID somehow. So 
So what's the key for? Iron key. Hmm. If I turn that wheel. Would the drain pipes of the universe open up and swallow all solid matter? It could happen. Something I'm missing at the metro station? It's a plaque commemorating the Venice Massacre of 2109. It reads, In honor of those who died defending our right to live. Did they say what year this is supposed to be? Subway. This also is oh, he's gate. There we go. Well, that was a pain. This guy's the reason they invented the phrase, hitting the bottle. And he's hitting it hard. Well, at least he's not doing anything. I think he's selling something. Counterfeit. Triple strength raptures, probably. Highly addictive and guaranteed to blow your mind. Literally. Excuse me. Yes, huh? Oh, jeez. Hold on there one second, lady. Dang, Marquis. Light up! Good. Now stay that way, you hear? Is the theater open now? No, I reckon it ain't, lady. It don't open till this evening. Ain't nobody in there either. I reckon that wouldn't be legal. Okay, I'm confused. Why? <laughs> Why does this guy have 
a stuttering southern drawl if he's you know let's, let's just dispense with that you know <laughs> do you know a man called Cortez no I can't say as I does lady I ain't never met him now I reckon I'd like to get on with my sweeping, uh-huh. I have played Pocky and Rocky, yes. But I'm supposed to meet yes. him here. Are you sure you don't know him? Look, lady. I reckon you you should just mind your own bee's knees and get. I told you, I ain't seen Cortez today. You said you didn't know Cortez. I I reckon I don't know nobody by that name. So so I tell you what, I'd mighty appreciate it if if you'd stop bothering me, and let me get on with my work. Jesus, Mary, and baby Joseph. I reckon the whole dang world is wants to find Cortez today. Yes, I I do like uh. The Kiki Kai Kai games. Those are fun. Do you work at the theater? Yes, um, I'm Freddy. Freddy Mellon. My mama, Mrs. Dottie Mellon, she owns the theater. Yep, I reckon she does, uh huh. She owns it, and she be running it by her own self, like a, a real proprietor. I reckon I help out some, of course. Yep. And what do you do, sir? Why does this guy have I'm, this uh, sure. speech pattern? And I also takes care of sweeping and cleaning up after the show. My mama, Mrs. Dottie Mellon, she says she reckon I'm a regular jack of all trades. I'll tell you what, I think she's right about that, uh huh. Thanks, anyway. Yes, yeah, um, I'll tell you what. You go on now and let Freddie Mellon do his sweeping before his mama, Mrs. Dottie Mellon, get all P-I-S-T off. Okay. That was certainly a choice for a... Lady, don't you keep playing with that thing now, you hear? Leave it be. That guy's so conspicuous, he's got to be a cop on a stakeout assignment. Hi there. Having fun? Didn't your mother teach you not to talk to strangers? She never mentioned anything about that. She should have. Now get lost. Why are you dressed like a cop? What do you mean, why am I dressed like a... Hey, wait a second, what's it to you? Just trying to do my bit for the boys in blue, sir. You look like a cop, so if you're on a stakeout or something, you should try well, that's to right, they have a, a new one. more. Yeah. Go native! Yeah, how? I don't know, but that trench coat, it sort of gives it away. Perhaps a pair of blue jeans and one of those I'm with stupid t-shirts might help. Hold on, let me get this down right. Hey, wait a second, what am I doing? Who the hell do you think you are? The NPD fashion consultant? Is that supposed to be funny, ma'am? Are you a comedian or something? Because I'm not laughing. I'm not even smiling, am I? Now get your ass out of here and don't bother me again. Is that a threat? Damn right it's a threat. It's a fuse box. There's something wrong with the power in that box, and it looks like the theater marquee's connected to the same switch. It keeps flickering on and off.
like kerosene. Not particularly hungry. Assorted candy. Hello again. Cry. Are you on, on the job? You know. I suggest you get. Was that a. Yes. Hey, keep your hands to yourself, that city property, ma'am. piece of candy. Okay, there we go. This walkthrough's telling me to put the candy in the ooze. Okay. Stinky candy, sticky candy. All right. Hello again. Right. Don't you no, see so your not, not, not just that. So you're, what did you a triple whammy cow patty with a side order of grease onions and a lard bingo cola? What about fries? And a double order of cheese and fried taters, yeah. Tastiest damn fries you're ever likely to find. Soaking in melted goat cheese. And you had this when? Oh, about an hour ago. And you don't feel um the urge to go? No, ma'am, no. My bowels are genetically enhanced and require only perfunctory attention. The burger filled you up good? You don't have the munchies? Well, now you mention it, I have a craving for sweets. I didn't have time for my usual cool cow strawberry pie with whipped cream, chocolate sauce, and a scoop of ice cream. Wait a second. What am I telling you all this for? Who the hell are you anyway? Hey, get out of here, ma'am. Right this minute or else... Is this a threat? I think that was a threat. A very serious one, ma'am. Genetically enhanced bowels. Okay. Would you like a candy? Hey, yeah. That'll hit the spot. I feel kind of... Christ! Hey, what... What the hell do you think you're doing? Did you just throw a rock at my head? Now, I tell you what. You shouldn't have done that. I reckon that was a... Bad mistake. <laughs> you should have seen him run, lady. 
I reckon I ain't never seen nobody run that fast. And he was clutching at his buttocks like he had the runs or something. <laughs> he, he even lost his stupid old hat in the gutter. <laughs> I ain't never seen anything that funny in a while. Okay, let's see here. I guess open the fuse box, right? Alright, so I can use the key here, I guess. Now what? Dang, Marky, light up! Okay, so you using the glove to do it, or...? Hell, it gone dead on me now. I'm going to have to fix that sign proper this time round, uh-huh. I just need me a ladder and some tools from the basement. Sounds a little like he's trying to do a Billy Bob Thornton voice or something. It's it's locked. Okay, now what? Into the alley. Okay. Somebody picked up the garbage. Smells like moldy caramel popcorn and bingo cherry cola. Disgusting! It's a closed garbage bin. Can I just go in? There's no doorknob. It's impossible to open it from this side. I see. Okay. It's a fire alarm and a smoke detector. Reminds me of something, but I just can't put my finger on it. I feel an uncontrollable urge to raise my hands, though. The shadow's being cast by those garbage bags. Hmm. It's a mountain of garbage. Oh, I think I remember it's this. kind of unsettling to be so aware of myself all the time. That should do it, right? Where's that 
voice coming from? Show yourself! Hey. I ain't scared of no guy who don't have the guts to show himself, uh huh? And do the monkey! Oh, okay, I need, the, I need the hat. Got the little guy right where I want. Where's the hat? Just, just trash. There's that. <sighs> I wonder if the cop did like it's Maya Rudolph box. in Bridesmaids. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Hands up. There we go. Your legs. And do the monkey dance. This would probably work a lot better if I opened the can first. Dance. Hey. All right, somebody's coming. Hey, old Blanky, we got us a fire. Now, where is that voice coming from? Show yourself. All right there, mister. Do just, just the don't, monkey. don't you fire that gun now, you hear? I, I'm, I'm sorry I chased you earlier. Freddy, you'll do the monkey for you right now, if, if okay. that's what you want, uh-huh. He'll do the monkey until you ask him to stop, I reckon, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, you, hands up. Spread your legs. And do the Think got the little guy right where... Alright, there we go. Alright, after this I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit. But we're, let's go ahead and get us into the next chapter. There's no way out of there. Did you know that? There's no way out of Victor Hotel. You have no idea what I went through to find you. First... Do you like movies? Sure. Who doesn't? Wait a second. I was trying to tell you that... I don't much like modern movies myself. They're either too loud and expensive, or too obscure and self-indulgent. But old movies, really old movies, have a charm and a simplicity that appeals to me. Listen, please don't interrupt me again. It's starting to piss me off. But I have never interrupted you, unless I've had something important to say, of course. But go ahead. What is it you wanted to talk about? Why did you make me search all over the city for you? Search for me? I've been here for hours, senorita. I haven't moved. The question ought to be, what made you go out of your way to find me? We agreed to meet this morning, remember? As I remember it, there was no agreement. I said tomorrow, but you refused. I assumed you weren't interested. Who is it? I apologize for making myself unavailable, however. Don't give me that. You wanted me to come looking for you again. I you would come Actually, no. I... I had to lay low for a few hours. No way out of here. Does it have you know anything that? to do with the cop that was staking no this place out? out? Yeah. So it was a good thing I didn't stick my head out the door to look for you then, no? He's gone now. Are you in some kind of trouble with the police? Wait, don't tell me. Immigration. There is a way no, senorita. Not the police. There are bigger players than the police. I don't want to know. I'm not getting mixed up with the mob or gangs or anything like that. There's not much you want to be mixed up in at all, is there? My life's complicated enough as it is, Mr. Cortez. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Answers. You want, you need, answers. 
You keep telling me that, but you never give me any answers, just more questions. Like, who's out to get you? What's going on with me? How come you know so much about me? I plan to answer all your questions today, April. By the time you go to sleep tonight, your world will have changed, and nothing will ever be the same. You're just being cryptic again. It's like soap opera sex. Lots of boring dialogue, and when they finally go to bed, everything's dark and covered by blankets. You want the full Monty, then? Come with me. Come outside. No more talk. I will show you the truth. There's no way out of Victor Hotel. All exits just... They just lead back inside. This is probably as good a place as any. At least there's no one around to see. Except rats. Somebody says that to you, you just you run. see what? Stand back, senorita. What for? What are you doing? Why, Alice? I'm sending you through the looking glass. What? What is that? Please tell me it's a hologram. It's a mirror to reflect your dreams. I don't see anything, just light. Oh, you have to step through. Step through that? Oh no, I don't think so. This is the moment of decision, April. All time, past and present, revolves around this moment. The destiny of worlds is in your hands. But you must make the choice on your own. La vida es corta. You must decide how to live it best. All right. I'll do it. Vamos. Enter the light. Don't say that. It sounds too ominous. Just tell me what's going to happen. You're about to take the first step on the longest journey of your life. But don't worry. I'll be waiting right here. I must be insane to do this. Yes. It's pretty much a given. Oh, I almost forgot. When you're ready to come back, pay a visit to a friend of mine called Westhouse. Brian Westhouse. child and may the balance protect you Cortez Cortez I have a bad feeling about this Wait what was the name Cortez told me to remember? Westhouse? Ryan Westhouse? I think that was it. Cortez said to look him up when I wanted to go home. Well, I want to go home now. Okay. I'm gonna stop there for now. Uh, I don't know when I'll pick this up again. Uh, maybe next week? We'll see.